Hey everybody, it's Josh Alexander from The Brokerage and your host of Orange County Housing Market News. On today's episode, I'm going to be going over my Orange County January 2022 housing market update. So if you're a returning subscriber, thank you again for your continued support. I really do appreciate it. If this is the first time you're tuning into this show, this show is all about Orange County real estate. So I go over local trends happening in the market, I interview other experts in the field, and then I'll also go over some different tricks, tips, and advice for both home buyers and home sellers to help you out in today's market. So if you're thinking about buying or selling a home, make sure you hit that subscribe, like, and the bell button below if you're watching this on YouTube. That way you're notified every single week when I release a new episode. So let's go ahead and get into my January 2022 housing market update. Okay, so let's go ahead and see how the Orange County housing market is shaping up for 2022. And let's start with the supply side first. So if you recall on my last market update video I did in December, I let you know that there's a very good chance that at the beginning of this year, we were going to see the lowest inventory ever on record to begin the year in Orange County. And that's exactly what happened. So on January 1st, we only had about 950 homes throughout all of Orange County on the market. Now, just to give you some perspective, last year, which was the previous record, we still had about 2,600 homes on the market. So significantly less than we had last year, which is just making it very hard for buyers to find any homes right now and making the market extremely, extremely hot for anyone trying to sell a house right now. So now let's go ahead and look on the demand side of things. So on the demand numbers, let's just go ahead and just throw those out the window because right now those demand numbers have been so skewed because when we measure demand, typically we're looking at how many sales went into escrow. So let's look at an example. So for instance, last year we had about 2,600 homes on the market. So let's say 1,300 of those homes went into escrow. Well, the problem with that is if you look at this year, we don't even have 1,300 homes on the market at this point. So of course, demand is going to look like it has dropped since last year because the numbers are going to be skewed because the inventory is just too tight right now. So when you're looking at those demand numbers, you really have to keep that in mind. And when you're reading those headlines, demand is plummeting, you have to realize the reason why is because there's just not enough homes in the market. Specifically in Southern California, that's going to be the case in pretty much every county around here. There's just not enough homes on the market. So again, if you're seeing those headlines, make sure you take that into context and understand why the demand is showing that it's dropped compared to last year. So where does that put us in the housing market? Well, I feel like a broken record at this point. I've been saying this for so long now, it's not new information. We are in an extremely hot seller's market. So just to give you some examples, I just put a house on the market last week. We had over 90 groups of people show up, 14 offers came in. We had line out the door for these open houses. Buyers are trying to take advantage of these low interest rates while they're still hanging around because they have been going up and some buyers are getting nervous thinking they want to get into the market before they go up anymore. So for instance, last year we had the lowest interest rate we've ever seen, which was 2.65 to start the year out. This year, Currently, interest rates are hovering right around 3.22, so significantly higher than last year, and experts are predicting at this point they're only going to increase more by the end of the year. Hey everybody, sorry for the quick interruption, but I wanted to give you a quick update on interest rates. So I shot this video originally yesterday, Wednesday the 12th, but today, Freddie Mac just released their new interest rate averages for the week, and the interest rates just shot up again to 3.45, so almost a quarter of a percent over a one week span. So interest rates are definitely going up significantly over the last month and a half. So if you are thinking of buying a home, definitely think about getting in the market now before they go up anymore. And on the selling side, make sure you're taking advantage of these buyers that are trying to get into the market and get a home while interest rates are still low. Okay, back to your regularly scheduled program. So you're seeing this kind of panic by buyers trying to get into the market all at once right now 
to take advantage of these low interest rates, while at the same time, we have the smallest amount of homes to choose from. So of course, we're going to be in an extremely hot seller's market, and it's going to be that way for some time. To be able to make up that deficit of homes to get us to a more normal market, it's just not practical to do over one or two months. It's going to take months, if not years, to be able to get the inventory where it needs to be. And really the only thing that's going to slow the housing market down at this point is interest rates rising to a high enough point where some buyers start to drop out of the market because the homes are no longer affordable. So that's the thing you're gonna be wanting to watch most closely this year is interest rates. The higher they go, the less buyers are gonna enter the market. So you'll see homes finally start to accumulate on the market, giving the buyers that have stayed in the market a little bit more choice. So what is my recommendation if you're a seller in this market? Well, obviously, if you put your home on the market right now and you place it at the high end of fair market value, you're going to get a lot of traffic in your home and you're going to be able to sell your home very quickly. Pretty much anything in Orange County that's under $2 million is selling in less than three weeks. And in general, if you place it at fair market value on the market today, even all the way up to that 1.75 million price point, typically you're gonna have multiple offers that first weekend. And if you want to, you're gonna be able to get into escrow within seven to 10 days. So if you need to sell your home or you wanna sell your home, now is a great time to get it on the market to take advantage of those buyers that are really trying to get those low interest rates before they go up anymore. Now, again, the biggest thing for sellers is you need to price your home correctly out of the gates. I've said this over and over again on a lot of my previous market updates, but the homes that are overpriced are still sitting on the market. So if you're overpricing your home, that's one of the biggest mistakes you could be making as a seller right now because buyers have been in the market for longer than usual, which means they have a better understanding of a general price point that your home should sell for. So when they see that house way overpriced, you're not going to get the foot traffic and you're really losing that most valuable time period, which is the first two weeks your house hits the market where you're going to have the most amount of traffic on websites, the most amount of traffic through your open houses. So if you overprice your home, you're really shooting yourself in the foot. So make sure when you do decide on the price, it's based on the most recent comparable sales and not just the number that you think you can get. Because again, ultimately you're going to get a higher price if you can price it correctly, get multiple offers and find that buyer that falls in love with the property and is willing to pay over market value for it because they came and saw it. If you don't get them in in the first place because you overprice it, they can't fall in love with it, they can't picture themselves living there, and you might lose out on a lot of those opportunities for some great offers. So buyers, unfortunately, I really don't have any good news for you except the interest rates, even though they are going up, are still historically low right now. So yes, you might have to place five, six, seven, eight, or more offers on homes before you finally get one. And yes, you're most likely going to have to place those offers above asking price and be very competitive when it comes to your contingency removals and any other terms that the seller is looking for in order to be able to get into a home right now. So you really need to have an agent that understands the risks of writing very aggressive offers, can explain them to you so you can understand the risks and then decide how much risk you wanna take for each individual home that you're placing an offer on based on how much you like it, as well as your financial situation. So again, unfortunately for buyers, I really just don't have a lot of good news for you because the longer you wait at this point, the more interest rates are going up and the faster appreciation is going up as well. So you're paying more for the same home with a higher interest rate if you're waiting a couple months before entering the market this year. So although it's hard, if you know what to expect when you go into the market, it'll be a lot less disappointing if you don't get that first home that you place an offering on because you can expect that and you can expect to know that it's a very competitive market and you'll know that there's probably multiple offers on every single house that you decide to place an offering on. So that's the biggest thing for you right now is you have to have that knowledge to know what you're getting into and what to expect when you're going into these multiple offer situations. Now, the one glimmer of hope that I can give to you as a buyer, there should be more and more inventory that eventually hits the market as every week goes on. So typically, we start seeing inventory rise in January, it starts to accelerate in February, and then it gets even hotter as you get into March, April, before you see the peak, which typically happens in May. So the number of homes that hit the market in a single month typically max out 
around May. So that's when you see the majority of homes hit the market. So if interest rates do stay low enough where they're not going up significantly, let's say they go from 3.2 to 3.4, you should have a little bit more selection as you get farther into the year. However, we do have a very large deficit that we have to make up because we started with such low inventory. So you do have to understand that even as May comes along, it's still going to be a very hot seller's market. You might just be able to have three or four homes to place an offer on instead of one. So keep your fingers crossed. We're hoping that sellers decide that this is the year they want to cash in on that equity, sell their home, move up to a different place, or move down to a smaller place because they're empty nesters. And hopefully that will start freeing up some inventory as we progress through the year. And that way you're able to take advantage of those low interest rates while they still are hanging around. So I hope you found this content useful. Again, if you do, please hit that subscribe, like, as well as bell button below, and consider sharing this with any family or friends that might find this information useful as well. I wanna get this information out to as many people as possible so they can also be knowledgeable about what's going on in the housing market. So until next time, stay healthy, stay happy, and I'll see you on the next show. Bye.